and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass, and today I want to talk about installing a Floyd Rose on a guitar that did not come with one. Uh, this also was supposed to kind of be, oh, I'm going to completely redo my PV Tracer and repaint it yellow. Uh, the Tracer video is just a few videos back. If you're interested, you can go back and watch that one. I ended up installing the Floyd just to kind of get a sense of the guitar and decide where it sat after I installed the Floyd Rose, which as you can tell, it's on here and uh, it's fully functional and sounds great. I decided I'm not going to refinish the guitar and I'm going to kind of keep it as a little bit of a rat rod. Uh, didn't even put the uh, truss rod cover back on as blacked out the truss rod, uh, the truss rod cavity there. Um, I think it looks just fine the way it is. Uh, and I'm just going to keep the guitar original, uh, except for the fact that now it has a Floyd Rose on it. It just has that 80s vibe that I was looking for. And with the uh, kind of crappy Strat style trim that was on it, it just didn't have that vibe. But now that it's got the Floyd on it and I like the black nut against the black headstock, I just am going to not mess with it. It plays great, it sounds great, and I think it looks great too. I really am happy with the guitar. So this will be the last time I discuss this guitar in detail. But I did have to put a Floyd Rose on it. So we're gonna go through some of the things that it takes to do that or how you would install one. And it's pretty simple, really. If you have a Strat style guitar or a guitar that is routed, a flat top guitar that is routed for a tremolo system, that is the old school, you know, Leo Fender style with the, you know, with the springs in the back and all the good stuff. The standard, you know, tremolo routing that all of us are accustomed to. Putting a Floyd in is pretty easy. So, I'm just going to kind of go through the steps that I went through to do so. Let's start up here at the nut. So, if you have a guitar that has a nut that terminates at the fingerboard, i.e., you know, like on a Stratocaster sometimes, uh, on Stratocasters and, and Telecaster style guitars and many other styles of guitars, you have your fingerboard. And then you have a route that is done into the fingerboard where the nut lives. Then on many other instruments, you have a nut that is against the end of the fingerboard. Well, I was lucky in this case because all I had to do is remove this nut to install the locking nut. If you have a guitar that is a Strat style or has that route, you have to remove the material that is in front of the nut up here towards the headstock, remove that material and flatten it and get it to the proper height in order to install this. All I had to do to put this in was to, you know, I, I used brass shims to get it to the right height and make sure that it was level. And then I just drilled the two little screws in, screwed on the nut and there you go. Um, in the other application, like I said, on the strats where you have the route in the middle of the fingerboard kind of, or there's material behind it, really removing that material is as simple as just being very careful with a very sharp chisel and just carefully easing that material off, keeping it dead flat, take a dead flat, you know, uh, a dead flat sanding block and get that nice and level. And then you can install your nut just the same. Uh, I didn't run into any issues with this, although the truss rod route is fairly robust. So I did have to kind of work around the sides and figure out exactly what angle to drill my screws into to keep the nut secured to the neck. So once you have your nut height set, and then it, it, bears, it, 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 it bears mentioning that when you do that, you know, just as with any other nut, this is not like an adjustable nut. You're not going to be able to sit there. You could file on it if you wanted to, but it's supposed to be as it is. So you just adjust the height up and down with shims, or if you're lucky, you know, you remove exactly the right amount of material and you're all set to go out of the gate, which I was not. I had to do quite a bit of shimming, experimenting with shimming, and I even cut some of my own custom brass shims for this. Uh, then you do the same thing you would on any other nut. You just get it to the right height so that you don't have sitar sounds up here, but you also have the strings relatively close to the fret, nice and tight so that you're not going out of tune when you are fretting at the first, second, third, fourth frets. 
All right, so once you have that established, you can move on to the tremolo itself. And what I do when I install a Floyd is I take the existing tremolo out, and then I take the Floyd, and I fit it. And I just kind of put it in there, and I experiment with it. I make sure that it's going to be able, that the, the string brakes are going to be at the same place that the old bridge uh, had, so that the intonation won't be completely goofy, or you have to do extreme adjustments on it. You want to try to posit you want to spend a lot of time positioning the bridge. And I do that by using blue tape on the guitar. And I sit and I make sure that like the string's not going to end up off the fingerboard or this string's not going to end up off the fingerboard. And I get it lined up in that part of the uh, in, in uh, on the you know horizontal to the neck. And uh I go ahead and get it lined up. The pickup's usually a good indicator, and then you want to also make sure that your string brakes are going to be, your strings are going to be right over your pole pieces, and that's another good indicator that you're on the right track if your saddles are lining up well with, uh, with your uh, pickup pole pieces. So you go through and you make sure that you have that part set up. Then you do your front to back. You have to examine how the block is looking inside the cavity. You have to uh, make sure your tolerances are there. I had to shave just a tiny bit of material, but then it ended up when I finally got it in perfect position, I didn't even need to do that. So uh, I thought that I, was, I needed to remove the material, but I didn't. Uh, I got very uh, not lucky because I spent a lot of time lining this up before I drilled my holes but uh, it lined up beautifully and it covered up the existing screw holes which is another thing that's nice to have uh i have a wilkinson trim that i put on uh one of my strats and it it you can still see four of the uh original vintage tremolo holes in the body of the guitar and that's kind of a bummer but you know it's the, it's the cost of doing business if you're going to do these sorts of things but anyway so you spend a lot of time getting your bridge lined up. Make sure it's going to intonate. Make sure your strings are lined up with the with the neck, lined up with your pickups, and or in this case, a single pickup. And once you have it in position, and you're really, really sure that you know where it's at, you go ahead and you get your um, you get out your studs, and you figure out okay. You have to kind of compensate for you know where the bridge is ultimately going to be pushed up against into the uh, into the the slots here on the on the bridge posts. You have to kind of you know eyeball it, compensate, measure twice, measure a hundred times, and then what I do is I take my awl and I poke a hole in the top of the guitar, and I'm like okay, and I always do this one first down by the whammy bar because that's the one that gives you no wiggle room uh that is going to be your that that that's your final destination right there and once you think that you have that hole right take your time and work your way through the bits i went through about 12 drill bits as i drilled this out because you know it's close to the it's close to the pickup cavity it's it's close to the existing opening here and these posts and their studs that go down into the into the uh, body of the guitar they're very robust they're big around you know they're large so i just gradually work my way up through the bits I do it in reverse sometimes too, just to make sure that I'm not gonna just crack something open or split the body of the guitar. Make sure you don't go through the back of the guitar by flagging your bit with a piece of tape. Measure once, measure a hundred times like I was saying. So I was very meticulous with my, with my preparation and then the drilling of the holes, you know, by the, it, it, was, it was relatively easy from that point on. After that hole is done, then you put the pick, then you put your uh, tremolo on, do a test fit, and then you can determine exactly where you want this stud to be. You have a little bit of wiggle room on this one because you don't have that piece of metal wrapping around up here. And there you go. Uh, you know, Floyd Bros setup, a lot of people are frightened of or like to complain about. I find it to be really not that much more difficult than setting up a standard trim. Uh, I've got mine, you know, it's just, it, it's floating, 
not incredibly floaty, but it's got a little float to it, and I have it parallel with the body of the guitar. So I can do a little bit of a pullback, and then of course I can do the dive bomb. Uh, what other notes did I have for myself here? Oh, now this is something that came up with this guitar that was kind of interesting. Uh, when I put it on, the action was incredibly high because the neck angle needed to change. So thankfully on the tracer, it's as if PV knew that people were gonna put Floyds on these. I have a micro tilt adjustment in here. So I just uh, adjusted that until I got the neck angle right and that solved that. Uh, talked about alignment, we talked about the nut and shims, drilling and putting in the inserts and all that good stuff. And like I said, for the setup on this trim, you know, it's the usual thing. You play the balancing game between the tension of the strings and the tension of the springs to see, you know, to get it to where you want it. Um, I, I like my Floyds to have a little float to them, but and not to be dead flat on the top. If you want to have them dead flat on the top, you have to uh, recess in these studs a little bit more than I did, which is not a big deal. And sometimes you have to remove a little bit of material back uh, underneath underneath the uh, the tremolo itself, the block on the top, so that the fine tuners and everything have uh, room to move. Uh, with the slight float, like I do, there's just no issue with. There's plenty of room for all the mechanicals to uh, do what they need to do. So anyway, uh, I just thought I would. Uh, I've got some. Kind of high gain distortion. I'm using a BBE 427 uh, distortion pedal. It's a rat clone. And then I'm using, as usual, the Acoustic Control Core 117, which has probably been buzzing nicely in the background the, the entire length of this video. But anyway, let's take a quick listen to the guitar. <laughs> Apologies for that uh, awful little bit there in the middle, but I was just trying to, you know, kind of show up higher like what the uh, what the pullback sounded like, and it sounded like that sounded like garbage. But anyway, uh, overall though, uh, you get a sense of the range of the tremolo. The tremolo's got a good range. Um, I I love it because now the guitar does not go out of tune. It stays in tune immaculately and the cool thing is is like you know what i've been experimenting with you know like with my jaguar and jazz master and stuff like that is i like you know i like using trim now where i can go back and forth more which is more difficult on a strat trim i don't really like strat trims to be too floaty because then they become um they can they can kind of get a little goofy at that point as far as like when i'm when i'm trying to do certain things but anyway um what i really appreciate about a floyd is that i can sit and i can do all those kind of like you know nice you can do let's turn the distortion off here uh you can do you know stuff where you get kind of You know, you can do little little subtle things like that, and you don't even have to worry about the guitar going out of tune. And and, and that's the thing. Most of the time, when I'm using a Floyd, I wouldn't be like you know, you know tr like kind of what I was doing earlier, which was ridiculous. But um, when most of the time when I'm using a Floyd, I'm going to be using it in a fairly subtle way, just uh, just to do you know light effect work rather than like dive bombing or doing crazy stuff. But anyway. 
thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a long rambling video. Um, I hope that it's of some use to you guys if you are interested in putting a Floyd on a guitar that doesn't have one. It is really not that big of a deal. Just, just really double, triple, quadruple check everything before you drill those two holes because really that is the whole thing if you can get those if you can get these posts in the right place you've won i mean that's the whole deal it's just two holes you drop it in and then you set it up so anyway um i want to thank everybody who has subscribed thus far i hope that if you made it this far in the video or even if you didn't that you have subscribed now and I look forward to comments. Uh, any comments that you have, I appreciate and I will be happy to answer. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. All right, take care.